previously on part three of our White Mountain Special. After exploring some more of the Apache Sitgreaves forest, I had made it to the lookout complex on top of P.S. Knoll. The trail was rough on the way back down and I ended up with a leaking left front tire. After trying to limp it along to my next camp, I finally had to stop on the side of the trail and change it out. I spent the next few hours checking out different viewpoints of both the Black River as well as checking out some of the wall of fire damage along Forest Road 24. After a much needed night of rest, I hit the trail and drove along the east fork of the Black River to a paved road near Alpine. Today, I continue with days 4 and 5 of my trip, proceeding north into some more remarkable stretches of the White Mountains. After traversing the 12 miles from Buffalo Crossing, I found myself at the paved Three Forks Road between Big Lake and the town of Alpine. I stayed left briefly on the road to head north to my next trail turnoff, which was only half a mile ahead. Now back on the dirt road, I stayed north onto Forest Road 88B. I was still aired down from a couple of days ago, so I was able to continue rolling into the forest. The trail continued to climb. Despite passing a large group camped out along the trail, things seemed pretty secluded. There was evidence of some road grading going on, but things remained rocky and washboardy for a while. Eventually, things topped out around 8,800 feet as the trail passed through a wet marsh area. Here, the landscape was a rich green and puddles of water remained in the various tanks. It was really something. The trail continued downhill as it slowly dropped in elevation. After another mile or so, I met up with Forest Road 88 and headed to the west. The trail along this section was downright gorgeous. Some more open views and even some elk greeted me as I passed along Rogers Marsh. The road remained mostly easy as the scenery changed yet again. This time, a large, wide meadow appeared to my left. This section wasn't quite as green as the few miles before, but there was still some water flowing in the lower parts. The wind had picked up through this open section. Off on the left was the ruins of another remote corral. This one, however, was unique and appeared to be built completely of wooded posts. Five miles from my last trail junction, I came to another trail intersection. My planned route would be taking me to the right and further north, however, there was a view that I had to check out to the left. Just to the south, I stopped at Crosby Spring. Located in the lowest part of the wide meadow, a small stream flows underneath the road. And the view? Well, it was incredible. Like something out of a postcard. Even though it was windy, a slight trickle of water made for a nice, relaxing spot. I decided to grab some lunch here and enjoy the view for a while. It was just too good to pass up. Once back on the trail, I continued northbound. The trail wound through some dense forest as it resumed climbing. The thick forest gave way to rolling grasslands. The road became extremely smooth along this section as it again reached over 9300 feet in elevation. The wind gusted strongly. Rolling hills and even the upper reaches of Mount Baldy peaked above the horizon. A few miles further north, the trail had re-entered the forest. Along a side trail, I reached my destination, an old homestead located in the middle of nowhere. 
Unfortunately, very little is actually known about this spot. Historic maps of this area describe this location as some kind of old guard station or cabin associated with the Forest Service. Beyond that, there is really nothing known about this site. There were a decent amount of ruins that hadn't yet been claimed by the forest. A fireplace, shed, numerous fences, and other random pieces lay on the grassy floor. It seemed like a really nice place at some point. I can only begin to imagine the lifestyle that the owners who lived here experienced on this remote plot of land. It seems remote nowadays, but back when this place was functioning, you really had to be on your own. By four, I had left the homestead site and explored the area a little further. The forest roads across the Saffle OHV loop, which seemed like it would have been a great ride if I had my ATV with me. After making it nearly to Eager, I headed back south to find camp for the night. Today was extremely windy, so I would need to find a spot relatively tucked away for the night. Crossed back over my new favorite spot near Crosby Spring, and eventually found a secluded spot near an Aspen Grove. It was a great little spot. There were no big views, but the shade and relative quietness was nice. Once camp was set up, I began on dinner. Tonight would be something a little different. After some water was boiled, I got the spaghetti going. With the sauce warmed up and the noodles buttered, dinner was ready in no time. Sometimes it's the simple meals or the ones you wouldn't think about making that can really be a hit when you're out camping. With dinner done, I enjoyed the sunset. Not long after, I found myself back up in the tent and ready to hit the hay. The next morning, I was slow to get up and around. The surrounding forest had kept my campsite pretty well in the shade for most of the morning. Today was the first day that I didn't really have a set plan. I was considering staying the night in the same spot, actually. I got working on a little more involved breakfast than the past couple of days. It wasn't very healthy, but it did taste pretty good. The next few hours were spent lounging around camp. It was kind of nice to do absolutely nothing. After sitting around camp for a while, I eventually got bored, so I decided to pack it up and try to find a different, more secluded spot. I continued back north up the road and eventually passed over Crosby Spring. Eventually, I made it back to Forest Road 88 where I had spent some time driving down yesterday. This trail had proved to be one of the more scenic in the White Mountains so far. I felt confident I could find a good spot somewhere along its length. Within a couple of miles of easy cruising, I pulled off the main road and quickly found the perfect spot. This shady spot would be perfect for my last night of camping. It was fairly level and had a slightly overgrown fire ring. It's clear that someone has definitely camped here before, but it's been some time. I got the tent opened up for the last time on this trip and got my gear in place. A quick walk around revealed that this area was much more scenic than my last campsite. 
a lush green meadow was located a quick walk away from my camp. At this point, I was glad I had packed it up and headed for this area. The elevation was around 9,000 feet, but luckily the weather was mild and not overly windy right now. Back at camp, it was dinner time. I fired up the stove and got some chicken warmed and seasoned up. Next, it was time for a tortilla and cheese. Tonight would be chicken quesadillas, another simple staple. With the cheese melted and paired in what can only be described as the perfect combo, I sat down to enjoy. It was absolutely delicious. So good in fact, I had to make another. With darkness creeping in, I dug the fire pit out. Although the ground was fairly wet in this area, I was eventually able to get a campfire started. The surrounding area showed evidence of wildfire, so I would be keeping things small and under control. I sipped on some more whiskey as I sat to enjoy my last night in the White Mountains. After things eventually simmered down, I retreated to the tent. It was a fairly chilly night, but I managed to bundle up inside the tent. The next morning, I was up at a decent time. I had a long highway drive back home today, plus some additional forest roads to cover, so I would need to get rolling fairly soon. I got a simple breakfast prepared and enjoyed the view. With dishes washed and camp packed up, I was soon back on the trail. I had around 5 miles to cover before reaching paved roads, and I enjoyed every single one of those miles. The drive out was easy but scenic and featured more rolling meadows. Eventually, I made it to Highway 261. At this point, I had been aired down for 4 days, so I needed to air up before hitting the highway. Of course, at over 9,000 feet, this takes a little more time than normal. I was soon back on the road and on my way back to Phoenix. This trip had been incredible. While a little bit different and a little bit slower paced, it had been great to relax and take in the scenery in what is, hands down, one of the best places in Arizona. While some things were certainly unplanned, the weather had been great, the trails were fantastic, and my six day adventure had absolutely flown by. From some rough spots in an old mine in Tonto National Forest, to high elevation lookouts and meadows in the White Mountains, I was glad to have returned to Eastern Arizona for this trip. I would highly recommend you check the area out if you ever get the chance. That's going to be it for this special. If you're interested in some of the trails we did, you can check some of them out over on our website at azoffroad.net forward slash offroad trails. I really do appreciate you watching this series, and as always, we'll be back with more specials, historic spots, and Jeep projects in the near future. We'll see you on the next one.
you don't want to poop in the woods, extra cheese. Little, uh, little tidbit there. the story if you're gonna have to change a tire it may as well be somewhere as pretty as the White Mountains so can't complain <laughs> the elevation's killing me though but <sighs> can't complain